Welcome back. I'm Travis with Linux Academy. In this lesson, we'll start learning about Docker Swarm. So at this point, we learned about how to go and pull images, create containers, as well as using Docker Compose to go and deploy applications. Now we want to take things a little bit further. We need an easy way of going and scaling our containers. And this is where Docker Swarm comes in. There's two major components of Swarm. There is the Swarm cluster, as well as the orchestration engine. The cluster itself is enterprise grade and secure. A cluster is going to consist of one or more Docker nodes. And when you go and initialize it, that very first node is always going to be a manager. Out of the box, Docker Swarm has a number of security features. This includes an encrypted distributed cluster store. By default, communication between the nodes is encrypted. Swarm also uses secure join tokens for both manager and worker nodes. Swarm exposes an API that allows you to go and deploy and manage complex microservices with ease. You can go and define your applications in a manifest file in a declarative fashion. Swarm makes it easy to go and perform rolling updates, rollback failed deployments, and scale your applications up and down. Swarm was initially not part of Docker, but officially became a part of it with the Docker 1.12 release. When creating a Swarm, it's going to consist of one or more nodes, and that first node is always going to be a manager. And Swarm can be run on anything from physical servers to virtual machines, cloud instances, and it can even run on Raspberry Pi. There's two types of nodes in a Swarm. You either have a manager or a worker node. The primary role of the manager nodes is to keep an eye on the state of the cluster, as well as dispatching tasks to the worker nodes. Worker nodes are responsible for accepting these tasks and then executing them. Configuration data and the state of the swarm is stored in etcd. etcd is also run in memory on the manager nodes, which means that it keeps things extremely up to date. And another great thing is that you don't have to worry about going and configuring it because it's installed by default when you go and create your swarm. If you're security conscious, then you should really consider running Docker in swarm mode. Transport layer security is tightly integrated into swarm. It uses TLS to go and encrypt communication, as well as handling the authentication of nodes, and authorizing roles. And on top of that, automatic key rotation is also thrown in. In Swarm, the atomic unit of scheduling is the service. This is a new object in the Docker API. And in a nutshell, it's nothing more than a construct that wraps the container and it gives it additional functionality, such as scaling, the ability to go and perform rolling updates, as well as rolling back to a previous deploy. And when a container is created by a service, it's typically referred to as a task or a task replica. Now that we've gone and hit the highlights, let's start working with Docker Swarm. 